Hello everyone, I'm Cole from the Kingdom, and this is my Dragon Age headcanon series, where I talk about the different choices I've made throughout the games and why. Dragon Age 2 has a bunch of small narrative decisions, but not many struck me as being worth making a whole video about, so instead I've just compiled a few interesting ones together in one package. I'll probably make another collection like this at some point, maybe for the other games as well, so let me know what other choices you'd like to see me cover. So first on this list we have Kelder, a serial killer who is the son of a magistrate who continues to pull strings for his son so he never stays locked up. Could be love, could be not wanting to have his reputation tarnished. Uh, Kelder targets young elven girls, and he claims it's because demons told him to. The reality is that he's just deeply troubled and suffering from a form of psychosis. This is one of only two times where I pick the aggressive option because he says the Circle lied when they told him there was no demon, and I tell him I doubt they were lying. Because if the Circle, or especially the Templars, even suspected a demon at work, there's no way they would have let him go. I really like that they included this in the game, because even in a world where we have demons possessing people, and blood mages drunk on power and whatnot, there are still run-of-the-mill killers and people suffering from the same mental illnesses that exist in reality. That said, the best place for him would be in a mental institution, or at least a prison so he's not a threat to anyone. Unfortunately, I think mental hospitals are rare in Thetis if they exist at all, and they are almost certainly not up to the standards of modern institutions. Not that they're always perfect either, but historically they've... well, I'm not going to go into that. The point is moot, anyway, because the Magistrate continues to pull strings so Kelder isn't locked up. And it really hurts because he does show remorse, and begs you to stop him. On my first playthrough, I spared him because I'm always the life is precious kind of guy. But in lieu of other options, and taking into consideration Kelder's own wishes, yeah, I put him out of his misery. The elven girl he kidnapped... I don't think she's suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, I think she's just a compassionate child who has recently gone through a traumatic ordeal and isn't quite in the right mindset. She later becomes a guard, which I really love, but she says she was wrong and that I was right to kill Kelder. I don't think that's the lesson to take away from that, but it's great to see her become a guard and help people, especially since she's an elf. Next up, I want to talk about Varric's personal quests in Act 2 and 3. For Act 2, we find Bartrand, who has sold the idol, but has gone mad because of it. He does torturous things to his staff due to his madness. When we finally catch up to him and beat him up with some swords and fire, we have a discussion about it. I always have Anders and ask for his opinion, and he makes things temporarily better. But even if he wasn't there, I spare Bartrand for a few reasons. For starters, we have the option to lock him up and make sure he can't hurt anyone else. Although I can absolutely see this being a case where mercy may be preferable, I do think that should be Varric's decision. But also, after finding all that weird stuff down in that taig, we have no idea what really happened to Bartrand. Even Anders is at a loss. We should keep him alive to see if he can be helped, especially because the idol is still out there, and could just as easily affect more people. This should be studied, and if there's a chance Bartrand's mind can heal, we should try. I still feel the final decision ultimately rests with Varric, this is just my opinion. And it's also important to remember... Hawk doesn't know at the time what we know about Red Lyrium now. And then of course we have the idol shard in Act 3, and whether or not we should let Varric keep it for study. Now I did just say we should study the effects, but Varric is acting out of character and hearing things the second we enter the house. And then we see all the weird magical stuff happening. Yeah, no, this thing needs to be disposed of immediately, or else we risk another Bartrand. It's too dangerous to keep it around. I give it to Sandal. Ooh, enchantment! 
So lastly, we have the rather easy choice of whether or not to give Fenris to evil Abe Lincoln, which I'm only including on this list because look at him, he is evil Abe Lincoln. He's like Lincoln's evil twin. Looks exactly like him, but reverse morals. So, yeah, this guy is cartoonishly evil. He's not getting redeemed. No one deserves what he put people through. He dies. But Verania, I spare her. She did what she thought she had to to survive. And I love this line from Varric. Elf, Fenris, I know how hard this is to believe, but this is the last thing you want to do. I really love how it plays into Fenris's character arc, just knowing he's got friends to pull him back from the edge. Fenris then says he's alone, and... This guy just needs so much love. There's a lot I love about Fenris's character, and maybe I'll make another video to talk about that. For now, I think that about does it. There are some other small choices like these throughout all the games, so if you have any you'd like to see me cover, be sure to let me know. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like. I'll see you later.